Welcome to tape number one, Computer Kindergarten. On this tape, you'll soon learn the basics of computers and how to use DOS and Windows. Sit back and watch the Computer Tutor tapes at your own pace. To find or review a certain topic, just check the index card and quickly go to just the right place on the tape. Use the on-screen locator window to fast forward or rewind to just the right place. Now here's the Computer Tutor herself, Kim Commando. Welcome to Tape 1 Computer Kindergarten. I'm Kim Commando. And if you're like most people, you may be looking at a computer the same way a caveman did who saw a wheel for the first time. It looked good. A lot of people are using it. But what is it anyway? What does it really do? Watch my tapes and you'll be in the driver's seat with four wheels underneath you. We cover a lot of topics, so keep the lesson card handy that was packaged with the tape. The counter on your screen now is like a highway mile marker. The number matches the one on the lesson index card. When you want to review a subject or move forward to see another, just match the number on your television screen with the number on the card. And I want you to keep in mind throughout all our lessons that it's not important for you to know exactly how a computer works to use one. I mean, you know what this is, it's a VCR, and with it you can play movies and tape your favorite shows. How do you do it? You press a button. And what happens when you press the wrong button? Does it blow up? No, you just press the right button again. And it's the same thing with a computer. Now the computer you're learning about is called a personal computer, one person, personal computer. And they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, but basically there's two types. What you see here is called a laptop computer, and you can carry these around. You also hear them called a notebook or portable computer. And then there's also a desktop computer that can sit on top or underneath a desk. Now, no matter what the size the computer is, you can do all kinds of things with it, like do um, draw charts and keep pictures, your budget, your homework, your office work. Anything that you can do on paper, you can do on a computer, only easier and faster. Now, this is the computer, and it's covered up by a case, but that shouldn't bother you because you can't see inside a TV, stereo, or VCR either. This is the back of the computer, and we plug all the other parts of the computer hardware into the back of the computer. Now hardware is kind of a special type of term. It's all the parts of the computer that you can touch. Now you also need something called software that makes the hardware go round, but we'll see that later. Let's start at the top with the monitor. It looks like a TV, but it's not a TV, and you can't use it as one without some expensive extra gear. You also hear a monitor called the screen or the display. On almost every monitor, there's two buttons underneath. Now you can adjust these so that you can see the characters on the screen better. On the other side of the monitor, there's normally two cords that come out. One goes right into the computer, and you can tell where it goes by looking at the edge of it and trying to match it here. Where does it go? Well, it's easy to see. It goes right here where it says video, and you just push it in there. Now the other cord outside the monitor needs to give the monitor power, just like a TV, but I don't want you to plug it into a regular socket. Get one of these, a surge protector. It protects your computer from power surges because of storms or what have you. And they're not very much money, and it's like an insurance policy. This is the computer keyboard. And with it, we type just like on a typewriter, but there's some more keys. On the right-hand side is what's called a numeric keypad, which is great for when you need to type in a bunch of numbers. It's like an adding machine. You use the keyboard to tell the computer to do things that is shown on the monitor. The keyboard, guess what, needs to get plugged into the back of the computer too. Now it's easy to see where this one fits. There's only one place. It goes right here where it says keyboard and you just put it right in there and you're all ready to go. Now also aside from a keyboard, a lot of people are using these nowadays. And this is called a mouse. It kind of looks like a mouse, but it doesn't replace the keyboard. It works with the keyboard. And where does this go? You got it. It goes right in the back of the computer, too, so you can use it. Where do you think it goes? Right here where it says COM1. And then what you do is you just put it in there like you do with the monitor. See how easy it is? I mean, they all kind of work the same. Now, what good is having all this information inside the computer if you can't get it out and put it on paper? So what you need is something called a printer. Now there's all different kinds of printers out there, but it all depends upon how good what your work looks like when it's out on paper, whether or not it prints in color and how much money it is. Now you've probably figured out by now that we need to connect certain parts to the computer in order to use them. And guess what, there's a cable for this too, but you knew that, I know you did. And if you look at the edge of the cable or the back of the cable, 
Now this one's not hard to figure out because most of the spots are already filled in. But this is really easy because it says LPT1. That's really short for line printer one. And all you do is just put it in there like you did the others. Now what? We got another side of the cable left. We got to put that in the printer, which is a piece of cake. On the back of the printer, you normally see <clears throat> where this cable goes to. And again, it's easy for this. All you got to do is just match it up. Take a closer look, and you can see that it will fit in real nice. Then you just put it in there in the back of the printer. Then see these metal clips? That's it. That's all you got to do. Now there's one more thing inside the computer you should know. It's all those numbers that you hear thrown around in computer advertisements and in conversations. The 286, 386, 486 Pentium. Well, all it is is it tells you how new the computer is and how much money it costs. If you're an engineer running the latest and greatest in graphics and engineering software, maybe you need a 486 or Pentium. If you're just doing word processing, a 386 or even a 486 is just fine. Buying a computer is just like buying a car. Both are a mode of transportation or get you from point A from point B. But with a computer, you need to buy the software first and then the hardware. I put this, to, this computer together here, the monitor, the keyboard, the mouse, and this is the computer right down here. If you take a look, these are called disk drives. The disk drive on the top is called the A drive. The disk drive on the bottom, well, it's the B drive. You put floppy disks inside the disk drives, just like videotapes go in a VCR. Can you tell which one goes where? It's easy. This is a five and a quarter inch disk, and you, to put it inside the disk drive, you just slide it in. It's that easy. This is a three and a half inch floppy disk, and it goes in the same way. You may have noticed something about that five and a quarter inch floppy diskette. It had, looks like something took a bite out of it. Well, it didn't. This is called the right protect notch. And when it's covered up, you can look at the information on the disk, but you can't touch it. And I'm sure you figured out that the three and a half inch floppy disk probably has the same thing, but you don't have to use stickers. See this tab? Just move it, and when the hole's open, you can look, but you can't touch the information on the disk. Now, there are lights on floppy disk drives that go on when the computer is using the disk in the drive. When the light is on, never take out a floppy disk. You could damage that way. And you need to make sure you buy the right disk for your computer. Inside the computer is a special disk drive. You can't see it because it's inside, and it's called Drive C. It's like someone took all these floppy disks and squashed it flat as a pancake and put it inside the computer so you can use it. I have a tip for you. If you're out there buying a computer, I want you to buy one with the biggest hard disk you can find. Software makes hardware something other than a big paperweight. Like there's all kinds of music, there's all kinds of software. And there's two general types of software. The first one is operating system software and don't let the words throw you the disk operating system all it does is let the second type of software the applications work you need to know a little bit about DOS but first let's talk about how the information is organized in your computer a computer is nothing other than one big filing cabinet both hold information with drawers that are specific to what is inside like it's easy to find your keys when you know where they are inside the drawers there are folders and inside the folders well there's files the drawers inside your computer are called directories the file folders subdirectories and inside are all the files to put information inside your computer you have to save it unless you save it it's all gone now to make files and put them inside your computer, you either save it with software programs or you put software programs inside your computer. To name your files, there's some pretty strict rules, like you only get so much room on a label. The first eight characters in a file name, then you get three characters after that. But you have to separate the eight and the three with a period. Now you can use letters and numbers in a file name, but here's a list of special characters that you can't use. If you do use these characters, the computer will give you an error message and ask you to use a new file name. And now we're going to talk about DOS, the disk operating system. 
It's there when you turn on your computer that's called booting. It's like the computer picked itself up by its own bootstraps. When you turn on a computer, you hear some fan, a, some beeps, some rattling noises. It's all normal. When everything's all said and done, you end up at the DOS prompt where you do two things. You type in an English-like sentence or a command that lets you work with the files in your computer or you start a software program. Let's start with the commands. Now the letter C tells me that I'm using the C drive or the computer's hard disk. If it were an A, I'd be using the floppy disk drive, but it all works the same. The blinking line is the cursor. It marks where what you type appears on the screen. When you make a mistake, just press the backspace key, and if you get an error message, odds are you just typed in something wrong. Let's use a disk by first putting it into the disk drive or drive A. Just slide the disk in there. Now at the DOS prompt, type in the name of the drive, which is A, a colon, press enter, and you're going to see the C change to an A. To go back, just type the name of the drive, which is a C, colon, press enter, and we're right back where we started from. That's how simple DOS is. You enter a command and you press enter. You're learning the most recent version of DOS, DOS 6.0. Now there's older versions of DOS, but they all work the same, basically. I just want you to have the best knowledge. Now inside a computer, most of them, there's a battery-operated clock so the computer can keep track of the day and time even when the computer's off. If your computer doesn't have a clock, it thinks it's January 1st, 1980, and President Carter's in office. If you want to check or change the date in your computer, just type in date and press enter. Now, I know that that's not the current date, but I'm just going to move forward because I want to check the time. To check the time, just type in time, press enter, and it tells me what the computer thinks is the current time. Here I can change it, or I can just accept it by pressing enter. Now, you should know that the computer keeps time on a 24-hour clock. So 3.30 in the afternoon is 15.30. 6 o'clock at night, 1,800 hours. Well, congratulations, you just mastered three DOS commands. It wasn't tough, and we didn't even open a manual. Now, diskettes have to be prepped or formatted before you can use them. This is the DOS command format. You type in format, where the disk is located, which is in the A drive, the name of the drive, and a colon that tells the computer it's a disk drive and not a file name. Press enter. It asks me to put in a new floppy diskette, which is already in there, press enter, and it's going to go through and get that diskette ready so I can use it with my computer. Now instead of doing this, what you can do is buy a box of diskettes where it already says formatted on there. Now it's going to cost you a little bit more money, but it saves you time in the interim. I have to give you a big warning about formatting. It erases all the information on the diskette. Never format a hard disk, only floppy diskettes. Now the computer will take off until I get 100% complete, and then it will ask me for a volume label. That's almost like a file folder inside the computer. You can only see the volume label when you look at the diskette with your computer. The format's complete, and now it asks me for a volume label. I'll just type in my name, press enter, and now it will ask me if I want to format a, another diskette. I'll type in no because we got a lot to do. Now, you can, inside your computer's filing cabinet, there may be a time when you want to see all the files and directories and drawers. This is the directory command, D-I-R, press enter, and you can hardly read them, so there's a better way to do this. It's D-I-R, space, oops, see, I made a mistake, backspace, slash, P, that will show me the directories a page at a time and all the, all the files in my computer a page at a time. Press any key means any key on the computer. Now, there's a whole bunch of stuff on the screen, but the first two columns are the most important. The first column is the first part of a file name. The second column, the second part of the file name. And the directory in brackets, it means it's a directory or a drawer in my filing cabinet. To change to another directory or drawer in my filing cabinet, it's CD, change directory, space, the name of the drawer or directory, which is letters, press enter, and now you can see that I'm now in that drawer. To go back, it's CD backslash, like I want to go back, so I use the backslash. And you can see I'm right there at the C prompt. Sometimes you may need to make a new directory, and always do it when you just have a C on the screen like this. So MD, short for make directory, 
maybe I'll make a directory called Kim, press enter. Now just to show you that it's there, I'll do a directory again to see all my files, and it's right there on the bottom. It was that easy. Now to remove a directory, it's RD, short for remove directory, space, the name of the directory, which was Kim. Now just to show you it's not there anymore, I'll do a directory, press any key, and you can see it's all gone. It sure beats cleaning out a filing cabinet. Now in poker, there are wild cards, and in DOS, there are wild cards too. Let me show you how to use a DOS wild card, the asterisk. Let's say you can't remember the name of a file in your computer's filing cabinet. You type in DIR space shift 8 for that asterisk TXT. What this does is it finds all the files in my computer with a TXT extension, and it sure beats looking through papers in a filing cabinet. Renaming a file is another handy command. Let's say I wanted to rename newhome.txt. Let's call it moving in, because that's what we're going to be doing. Press Enter. And just to show you that it's there, I'm going to use that asterisk again, because I want to see all the files that end in IN. And there it is. It's right on my screen. Now, sometimes it's handy to copy a file from your, computer, from your computer's hard disk to a floppy disk. Here we use the copy command, the name of the file, and where we want the file to go, which is on the floppy disk in the A drive. Press Enter, you see the light go on, which tells me that the computer is copying the file. If you want to copy a file from a floppy disk to the hard disk, it's the same way with a few exceptions. Copy, space, where the file is located in the A drive, and then the name of the file, which is moving in. Press Enter, you hear the light go on, which tells me that the computer is copying the file. Let's say you need to erase a file. It's like house cleaning. You type in erase, space, the name of the file, which is moving in. Press Enter, and it's all gone. If you want to erase all the files on a floppy disk, that's another handy command. It's erase, space, where the, where the floppy disk is, which is in the A drive, and that asterisk again, shift eight, period, shift eight to get the asterisk. Press enter, you see the light goes on, and then DOS even warns me. It says, are you sure you really want to do this? And I'll say no, because I'm not sure. Now, never use the erase star dot star command on your hard disk, and be very careful with it if you do use it on your computer's hard disk. Now, if you erase a file, in DOS versions 5 and 6, there's a special command to bring it back. If you want to see what version of DOS you have on your computer, type in VER, press Enter, and it tells me I'm using MS-DOS version 6.0. Now, the command to bring back an erased file is called the undelete command. Type in undelete and the name of the file on the computer's hard disk, which was moving in. Press Enter. You see a whole bunch of stuff on the screen. And it, but the important question is, do you want to undelete it? Type Y for yes. It asks me for the first character of the file name, which was moving in, then gives me a message that says, hey, you got it back. Now, when you buy new software, it's always handy to keep a backup copy as an insurance policy. We use the DOS command disk copy to make an exact copy of a floppy diskette. First, what we do is put in the original diskette into the floppy disk drive. And now we're going to use, we're going to first go there by typing A colon, because that's where we want to be. That's the name of the floppy disk drive. And now we type in disk copy, because we want to make an exact copy of that floppy diskette. Now, it says to insert the source diskette, which I already did. That's the original floppy diskette that you want to make a copy of. Press any key to continue, and now what's going to happen is the computer is going to take some information off of that disk, and it's going to put it on what's called the target disk, which is the blank floppy diskette. And this is very handy when you want to not only make a copy of a software program as a backup, but also if you have an important information on, on a diskette that you might be afraid if you lost it, you'd really be in big trouble. Now the computer has asked me to insert the target diskette. So I take out the source diskette. And I put in the blank diskette, press any key to continue, and now it will finish copying that diskette. 
Now the DOS disk copy command takes a little bit of information off the source disk and puts it on the target or blank diskette at a time. So you may have to insert the source, insert the target, as you see I've done on the screen. Once it's all done, you're asked, do you want to copy another diskette? I'll say no, because we want to use some more DOS commands, just one more at the, on the C drive. Type in help. This is your help. Anytime you want to scream for help, you don't need to pick up a manual. All you got to do is look to your computer for help. Type help, a space, and the name of the DOS command you want some help on. Maybe it's copy. Take a look at the screen now and everything you ever wanted to know about the DOS command copy is right there. When you're done reading, press the Alt key, the F, and the X, and you're right back at the DOS prompt. And congratulations, that's it. You just learned DOS. See how easy? It's not tough to use a computer, and nothing even blew up. What would you say if I told you that the computer will actually clean up your desk? This is the way that my desk used to look. I had a Rolodex that kept all my names and addresses, a calculator to do addition and subtraction, a calendar to keep all my appointments, my trusty typewriter to type all those letters and reports. I had glue, erasers, scissors, rulers, and don't forget the whiteout. But we always needed a clock, so this way we knew what time it was. Well, with a program called Microsoft Windows, it makes it easy and fun to use a computer because everything's in pictures. Everything's in reach, the stuff in my desk, the stuff on my desk, and everything happens, you guessed it, in a window. Here, I'll show you. The whole screen is one big window. When you can see inside a window, like the games window, it's open. When you can't see inside a window, like the windows along the bottom, they're closed. When you first start Windows, the program manager welcomes you. He's like the head waiter in a restaurant, and each window is a different menu you can select from. You can pick a menu to choose from with either a mouse or a keyboard. Now, you can use just a keyboard, but a mouse makes it so much easier. Now, this is a mouse. It looks like a regular mouse, except for there's two buttons on the top. To hold the mouse, you cradle your hand above it, put your index finger on the left mouse button, your middle finger on the right mouse button, your thumb and your ring finger hold, this, hold the mouse in place. Now, as you move the mouse to the left, the mouse pointer on the screen moves to the left, too. Move it to the right or in circles, and the mouse pointer moves the same way. Now, there's a couple of mouse commands you need to know about. This is called pointing. I'm pointing on the game solitaire with my mouse pointer. There's also click. And to click the mouse, what you do is press and release the left mouse button one time. Double click, you push and release the left mouse button two times quickly. And if you ever lose the mouse pointer, don't worry, it's still there. All you have to do is pick up the mouse and the mouse pointer comes back. Now whatever you do happens inside a window with your files or with your software programs. Now, you need to use an open window in order to use any of the pictures inside. First, let's pick Solitaire. We're going to play the game Solitaire because it's the best mouse training around. First, we point to the game Solitaire. And to start a software program like Solitaire, we double click the left mouse button. And, that's, and the game comes up on the screen. Now, this looks just like the regular card game. I pick from the deck here, and then I match the cards up in this area. We need to move the 9 on the 10. So how do we do that? We point to it. We click with the left mouse button, and we move the mouse so it's there. And once it's there, we let go of the left mouse button and drop it. And that's called dragging. To uncover this card, I point to it, and I click, and it uncovers the card. We're going to point and click on the deck to show more cards. It's that easy. And it doesn't look like I'm going to win, so I'm just going to end this game right now. And how do we close a window? We point and click on this box that's called the control panel. Point and double click there, and I'm right back where I started. I want you to check out the pictures in Windows. These are called icons, and you've seen them before. Icons are in street signs, the little stick figures walking across the street. 
And underneath the icons, there's always a label that tells you exactly what the program is. We're going to use the clock program now. And to do it, first we point to it, click the left mouse button, and now we double click to start the program. And you see a clock appear in the upper right hand corner. And also on the clock, there's a menu bar that says, I can change the settings. I point and click on settings, and a pull-down menu appears, just like a window shade. And it, in here, I can change the type of clock I have from an analog, the kind with the hands, to a digital clock by pointing and clicking. Now, to make the clock really big or really small, you use these buttons. We're going to shrink it by pointing and clicking on the down arrow. Point and click, and it's down there at the bottom of the screen. To bring it back, I point on it and get it back by double clicking. Well, congratulations, you just ran your first Windows program and it was so easy. So from now on, instead of saying point with the mouse pointer by moving the mouse to wherever, I'm going to shorten it up. I'm just going to say point, that's it. Click or push the left mouse button one time, it's click. Double click means push the left mouse button two times quickly. You got it? So you may ha never use a typewriter again after I show you this program. It's called Write, and it's a word processing program. It's just like using a typewriter, only better. To use the program, I point on it, double click to start a software program, and I get a blank screen or like a blank piece of paper. This is the cursor in the upper left-hand corner. This is the mouse pointer. It becomes an eye beam when it's in the center of the screen or when it's on a menu bar, it's an arrow. Let's just start typing as if it were a typewriter, and I'll type my name. And it's so easy to type this way. So just point and click. Now, anytime you use a word processing program or any other software program, a good rule of thumb is to save early and save often. To save a software program, a file that you made with a software program, you point on File, point and click on Save, and now I can type in a file name and I'll just call this Kim1. I point and click on OK, and the file has been saved. And you can tell by looking up at the top of the screen, you can see the name of the file. Now, another feature in Windows is called the clipboard. It's a cup, cut, copy, and paste feature that allows you to take information from one software program and put it into another software program like we used to do with scissors. I'm going to cut, copy, and paste, but I'm just going to use copy. I'm going to copy my name by first placing the I-beam at the beginning of what I want to copy, clicking the left mouse button, dragging the mouse, holding it across. When I reach the end, I release the left mouse button. Point and click on Edit, and I see Copy. Point and click on Copy, and now whatever I highlighted has been pasted to the Windows clipboard. So it's a good idea that when you need to copy something, hey, you don't need to type it again. All you do is use the features of cut, copy, and paste that are in almost every software program. I want you to play around with this software program. It's really neat. You're not going to hurt anything. And when you're all done, you point and click on File, point and click on Exit, and I'm right back where I started from. Now we're going to use the calculator that's a lot like the calculator you may have on your desk. To use a program, we point on it, and then we double click to start the program. It looks just like a regular calculator, but instead of pushing buttons, I point and click on the numbers. 8 divided by point and click on 2 equals, by pointing and clicking, 4. It's that easy. Now to close a program, you know how we do it. We point and click, double click on the control panel. Now we're going to use the card file. And the card file is like a Rolodex file. And I started it by pointing and double clicking. And I have all these index cards in there. And when you want to add an index card to your file, I point and click on card. But see the F7? I want you to notice something very special about that. Point and click and add, and I can add a card to my file. Maybe I want to add a bread recipe. Point and click on OK, and I have it. Now remember I copied my name? If I point and click on Edit, see the paste? Now watch what happens. It's really neat. Point and click on Paste, and there I have my name. I didn't even have to retype it. So all the Windows programs use that feature, copy, cut, and paste, so any program you can use it in. It's really neat. 
these arrows up here, when I point and click on those, I can move my recipes or whatever's in my card file in that direction. When you're all done, you know how we exit. We point on file and click the left mouse button, point and click on exit. It asks me if I want to save my changes, which it's a good idea to save your files, but I'll say no by pointing and clicking on no. And now we're going to use the calendar, which is like my appointment book. Point and double click to start the program, and I can have all my appointments in one spot. I'm going to put in a lunch appointment at 12 o'clock by point and clicking. I'll type in lunch. It's that easy to make an appointment in your book. Now let's say I want to go home. I point and click on 8 o'clock maybe. I type in go home or just home. And now I want the computer to remind me with an alarm. So I point and click on alarm. I want to set an alarm and I have an alarm in the corner. Now like, see the F5 at the end of that? If I want to set an appointment with an alarm at the lunchtime, all I do is press the F5 key on my keyboard and it sets an alarm automatically. It's that easy. Now over here on the right side of the screen, it kind of works like an elevator. By pointing on the, and clicking on the down arrow, the elevator goes down and you see how the screen moves too, showing me more appointments point and click on the up arrow, and the elevator moves up. It's really kind of neat, and you'll see this in all Windows programs. This is called the scroll bar. But since we're all done with our calendar, I'm going to point and click on file, point and click on exit. Again, it asks me if I want to save. I'll say no, point and click on no, and I'm right back in the main window. Now this program's really neat. This is called the paintbrush program, and we're going to paint, kind of. I point on paintbrush, double click to start the program, and I have a full artist palette here. I'm not a very good artist, but at least I try. I'm going to open something that I drew, point and click on file, point and click on open a file to get it, and my file's down on the bottom, so I have to use those elevators. So I point and click on the down arrow to show more file names. Point and click on the file name that I want, which is KT because it gets that file for me and tells me that's the file name I want. Point and click on OK, and I have the file right on my screen. Now to use Paintbrush, I have all my tools right here. I'm going to point and click on a paintbrush because that's what I want. I want this size paintbrush, point and click. And maybe green is a good color for today, so I point and click on that. And now my mouse pointer is a paintbrush. And again, I told you I'm not a very good artist, but at least I try. So I don't want to ruin my picture. So now I can undo, which is great, everything I just did. So I point and click on edit, point and click on undo, undo and I have it right back the way I wanted it. So you should be noticing right now that when you learn one software program in Windows, you can use them all. When something is grayed out, like pick on our menu bar, that means you can't use it. It's not, you can't use it at that time. I'm going to point on file. I'm going to point and click on exit. It asks me if I want to save my changes. Nah, we don't want to do that. And we're right back where we started. Now, do you remember that filing cabinet I told you about, that a computer's like one big filing cabinet? I'm going to show you. It's in Windows, too. It's right here in the main menu. And we're going to open up that window by pointing to it and double clicking. It's right here. It's called my file manager. It's my filing cabinet inside my computer. So I'm going to point to it. I'm going to double click. And I have a whole inventory of all the files, all the directories and subdirectories inside my computer. And they're all listed here along the left side. And on the right side are all my files. The letter you see here up at the top, the C, tells me I'm using the C drive. The B tells me I'm using the second floppy disk drive in my computer. The A, the first floppy disk drive. What's really kind of neat about the file manager is let's say I wanted to copy a file, say kids.txt. I point and click on the file. That's all. And then I hold down the left mouse button, and we're going to drag it to where we want it. I want it on the floppy disk in the A drive. When I drop the file there by releasing the left mouse button, the computer asks me, are you really sure? Point and click on yes, and you see the light go on in the first floppy disk drive, or the A drive, because that's where we told it to go. 
Now there's also other things that you can do in your filing cabinet with File Manager. Let's say you wanted to search for a file. You wanted to find a lost file. Point and click on File, point and click on Search, and I can search for all the files depending upon any way I want to find them. Last time I wanted to see all the files with the TXT extension. To do that again, I point and click on OK, and then the computer goes through and it finds every file that has the TXT on the end. Point and click here, and I'm right back where I started from. Point and click on the menus in the menu bar, and you'll see a lot of DOS commands are right here just by using the mouse. It's really great to use the file manager. It'll save you a lot of time and energy, and it's easy. Let's point and click on exit, and we're right back where we were. Now let's say you bought a new software program and you want to put it on the computer. It's not very difficult. Usually software comes on one to two or maybe sometimes even ten diskettes. The most important diskette is the first one. It says program one. It'll have the number on it. Here are the instructions on how to put a software program into your computer. To install, you're going to first put the diskette into the drive A. You're going to choose Run from the Windows Program Manager. I'll show you how to do that. Also, you're going to type A colon install and press Enter. But first, we have to take out the diskette that we copied the file to. We're going to put in the first program diskette into the A drive, label side up, slide it in there. You hear a click. And now we're going to choose File Run from the Program Manager. Point and click on File point and click on run and now I type in what it told me on the diskette which was a colon install point and click on OK and now the software it's going on my computer what happens is it'll go through one diskette two diskettes until the software is all done and as it gets ready to install you may be asked for certain information like your name and the serial number of the software you can see we're perfect is getting ready to be installed from the floppy disk to the hard disk. Now with WordPerfect or any other software you want to install, just follow the directions on the screen. After you install a new software program that works with Microsoft Windows, you get a new window on your screen. Let's use it. We have a new window, WordPerfect. And to open the window, you know how to do this. I point and I double click and I see what's inside that window. Now to start a new software program, it's point and double click, and you get this hourglass that says, hey, the computer's telling you I'm working. I'm trying to get the software going. We're in WordPerfect for Windows, but I'm not going to teach you that now because you learned that on tape two. But you already know how to get out of a Windows program. I point and click on File. I point and click on Exit, and I'm right back where I started. So to close a window, you know how to do it. I point and double click on the control panel to open it up. I point and double click again. If you want to change the size of your window, just move the mouse pointer towards the edge, push and, or click the left mouse button once until you get a double arrow and just move it where you want it to go. If I want to change this, just put the arrow there, click the left mouse button, hold it down and just move it. It's that easy. But look at these windows. I can't see what I have on my desktop. To clean it up, watch this. I point and click on window, point and click on tile, and everything's so neatly arranged. Now a real important part of windows is going out the same door you came in. And that's with the program manager up on top. Now to exit windows, and it's important that you do this before turning off your computer, is I point and click on file, I point and click on exit. And it's important because this way the desktop looks like this when you come back. If I point and click on OK, I'm right back at the DOS prompt. Wasn't that fun? Aren't computers easy? I mean, they're not tough. Anybody can use a computer. I mean, whether you're 8 or 80, I mean, the computer's wonderful. And you just saw how Windows took all the stuff on my desktop and put it right here on my computer so I can use it quickly. I mean, there, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to learn computers. And soon, we're going to use more programs, and you'll see everything else that you can do with a computer.